What's up guys, Tommy Bennett here, and today I'm gonna give you the ultimate guide on how to learn jumps. Now, we're not gonna start by just sending you off a jump. We're gonna be a lot more progressive with our thought process. We're gonna learn some of our basic body positions right now in a static position, then we're gonna take it down the hill and then we're gonna bring it into the park. So make sure you stay tuned. And if I forget anything at the end of the video, make sure you leave me a comment and let me know. All right guys, we out. No, wait, we're not out. We're gonna go. All right guys, so when it comes to jumping, there's a couple things that we gotta make sure that we do. Now the first thing is our lead shoulder, hip and board are all pointed in the same direction. Essentially, our natural body position is to have our lead shoulder open and spin like this. Now if I were to jump straight up, essentially, my board will spin under me. Now let's say I'm going off a 100 foot jump and my shoulder's like this. Well, when I'm going off that jump, I'm just gonna be sliding or spinning sideways on, like in the air, not ideal, right? So our shoulders, our hips, and our board are all pointed in the same direction. So that's number one. So once you understand that body position, now let's add some movement to it. So what I wanna do is get my belly button in the center of my board. I'm gonna now get low. I'm simply gonna jump. Now this is really cool because you can check to see if your lead shoulder is open or not. So if I'm gonna jump like this, that instantly gives me feedback saying, well, my board spun, why? So that's number one. If you're rotating and your board's going sideways, it's most likely because your shoulder's not pointed in the right direction. After that, we wanna jump and we're gonna retract our knees. So we're simply gonna bring our knees up and in front of us, just like this. Now, we wanna learn that now so that we're in a more controlled and stable position in the air but this also translates to being able to do grabs down the road. So might as well start understanding the body position now so we don't have to relearn it later. Looks like this. Obviously that's a bit of an advanced move, but that's kind of the thought is I'm just essentially leaving my hand down, bringing my knees up, grabbing my snowboard, feeling awesome. And so let's go do a couple jumps and I'll talk about it after. All right, so we took like that movement that we learned up there, now we applied it to down the fall line. Essentially, I wanna make sure that I'm popping and I'm landing with my board pointed straight down the fall line. I can look back up and if I notice that my board goes sideways or that I'm landing on my heels or my toes that I'm in a twisted position. So you wanna make sure that everything's stacked. You guys may be asking, when do we pop versus when do we ollie? Now, we pop, which is a two-footed extension off of the ground. We do that more when you have side hits or an actual jump, like an assisted, like an assisted air, where there's a jump, there's something that's helping us loft in the air. That's when we're gonna pop. Now, if I have to generate 90% of that air time on my own, let's say flat on the ground, then I wanna be able to do an ollie. Now, if I'm taking this to a jump, I am gonna use the pop method. Know that there are the two options and know that when we're hitting jumps, we are popping. Now, we did touch upon ollies real quick just so that we know what an ollie is versus a pop. But we're gonna now try to find some side hits so that we can work on our pop before we enter the park. So, the ski doctor and I are gonna go searching in the woods for some stuff. Let's get it. Woo! Holy. We're out here looking for Bigfoot. That's a lie. So I'm out here in a mogul field and I'm trying to find moguls that I can practice that pop, bringing my knees up and being in that strong position. Now, yes, this is an advanced move. So make sure you're practicing your pop and ollies and jumps outside. But if you can take it in here, which is really beneficial, if you can take your pop into moguls, why that's awesome is because you're gonna have to learn how to absorb the terrain, pop, and then absorb the landing. If we can do it in here and we take it to the park, it's gonna feel so much more simple because you have a perfect run in, perfect run out, not as complicated. If you need to skip this step, totally cool. This is a bit of an advanced move. So if you're going to do this, find moguls that are within your comfort zone. You don't need to find the gnarliest moguls. Find some stuff that's mellow, 
that you enjoy. So, we're gonna go do this. After you build your confidence, you're really feeling good about your body position, which again is your shoulders, hips, and board going in the same direction. You're not rotating in the air. You're being able to take off flat base and land flat base. Super awesome there. Next thing you wanna do is go look at a map and try to find the beginner zone. We wanna find jumps that have the least amount of consequences so we can practice them without having a negative experience or getting broke off, not awesome. Now, the first run through, what you wanna do is go scope the jumps, know how big they are. Watch a couple people and see how many speed checks, how much speed they're taking into the jump. Some jumps may require you to go absolutely straight in, where other jumps may take three or four speed checks. So make sure you're understanding what you're getting into before hitting the jump. When it comes to hitting the jump, we're mimicking everything that we did out there. Body position, pop off two feet. The biggest difference is simply gonna be how much time you spend in the air. All right, so we're gonna go do that and we'll talk about it at the bottom. You'll notice that I did take off a of flat base. As you get comfortable and you start hitting bigger and bigger jumps, you wanna get comfortable being able to get on a slight toe side edge, which is gonna allow you to get a little bit more grip off the takeoff, especially if you're hitting like 50, 60 foot jumps. For now, because I wanna keep it as, as simple as possible, focus on flat base, keeping our body position nice and strong. All right, so the next thing we're gonna get into is a little bit bigger of a jump. Essentially, what we gotta do is just take more speed into it, and focus on those body positions, bring our knees up, feel good, spot the landing. We're gonna take it up a little bit. After we go to a little bigger of a jump, we're gonna learn our first grab and we're gonna get it. All right, guys, this is sick. So after you've hit a couple of really small jumps, the next thing you wanna find is a little bit bigger of a jump. Now you're looking for a jump that has a little bit more of a lip and maybe a foot to two foot drop off and then a roll out. You're not trying to find something that's super big and aggressive, find something that's progressive. You'll notice on the last set of jumps that I did, I had to take more speed checks. It does get more complicated with different jumps or with how much speed is available. So make sure that you're dialing in your speed and I recommend about four board lengths prior to the lip. Make sure you're flat and then you can just ride straight out. Everything's super simple. If I'm doing a thousand little speed checks up to the jump and through the jump, you're just gonna get confused. So do your speed checks up here, then go straight just like I did there. Now, the harder you pop and the harder you push against the jump, the bigger you're gonna go. I don't have to immediately go to a next gnarly jump. I can take the jump that I already have and make it bigger and start pushing off the ground and going bigger and bigger without like crazy consequences of another jump. We're gonna hop on the chairlift, we're gonna go through the park again, and now we're gonna add a grab. So, that, that's gonna be next. All right, let's get it. After you hit the jumps a whole bunch of times, you're feeling like a boss, you feel like you're in control, you're riding away every single time. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is grab your snowboard. So I do recommend that you take your back hand and you put it between your bindings. Now, if you happen to grab, point it down here real quick. If you happen to grab here or here, those spots are like the no grab zone, like it's not cool. So you do wanna make sure that you're either grabbing the tip, like the tip of your board, either here or here, or you're grabbing between the binding. That's gonna be a more proper grab. So just a little like, I got you moment. If you remember, one of the first steps that we were talking about is being able to practice bringing our knees up. Now what the sickest thing is, is I can keep my hand kinda here lazy, and then I bring my knees up. So watch this. Now, pretty sick, right? You literally keep your hand there lazy and you bring your board up to you. It's really important that you bring your board up to you. If you happen to break at the waist, take your shoulders and lean over, essentially what you'll do is you'll start to lean over in the air and you may end up on your face, not awesome. So spine upright, bring your knees up, grab your snowboard, feel like a boss. I'm gonna show you how to do it right here. So when 
we first learned how to indie, we did it on a small jump, big emphasis of bringing our board up to us. Now when we get to a little bit bigger of a jump, I like to think about getting my belly button a little bit lower and then I can push off the jump. That's gonna give me a lot more hang time. That allows me to grab my board. That allows me to like be patient and like make it feel good. After that, what you wanna do is add some style to that. So if you notice in this clip right here, I'm able to grab outside of my knee around still in between my bindings, but I'm able to do that. And then what I'll do is I'll extend my front knee super hard, add a little bit of creativity, add a little bit of fun to it. And remember, we're staying away from those no grab zones, but we are going around the knee, grabbing between the feet and adding some style. So, sick. All right guys, so that's how I would progress you from never ever hitting a jump to hitting a jump. And then as a bonus, we added some grabs in there so that we look good, feel good, right? So if you guys are super stoked on the channel, make sure that you guys give it a thumbs up. You make sure you subscribe, leave a comment down below if I miss anything. Now, one more thing. So I can do these videos by myself. So big thanks to the Ski Doctor Mike. What's up guys? All of his stuff is gonna be down below in the description. So if you're in the Denver or Summit County area, he can actually go to your house, wax your board on the spot, give it to you, and then you don't even have to think about it. He shows up, you go watch Netflix, then he does his thing, and then knocks on your door, he gives the board back, and then you're stoked for the next day. So make sure you guys go check out his Instagram, check out his website, and hit him up. Like always, you guys are amazing. We're out of here.